So you want to control your OBS overlay with the game? Then you've come to the right place. With I, you can do exactly that. Download the program first and then start your game. I take Rotato now. It's important to know at this point that this doesn't work if the game is running in full screen. If you've downloaded it, you have the packed version now and of course you have to unpack it. Put the folder wherever you want and then you can run it from there with the corresponding executable. Then you start the whole thing and then you get this little window here. You can make it smaller if it bothers you and you only want to start and stop or you can enlarge it or go to full screen mode if you want to have the lock included. The first thing you do now is to select the game with which you want to control OBS. To do this, click on the controller and select the game from the list. For me, it's Brotato. After that, we have to set what we want to observe in the game. Now you just go into the game and I now want to watch the little live display up here and depending on how much life I have, my OBS plugins change. That means I now have to enter the coordinates right next to the camera. First we can do 0, 0, 100, 100, enter and first see where we are. By clicking on the camera here, we take a small screenshot of it and now I see it took a screenshot up here in this area. That means 0, 0 is at the topmost left of your screen and 100 by 100 are the dimensions of your screenshot. Now we just have to adjust the X and Y coordinates accordingly until we see our live display. I can now see that my window is to the most left of the health bar. I'll do that now for the upper area. Now I can reduce the size of my screen again. I'm observing the upper area of the live display. Now we have set up the perfect area. Now of course we first want to create the categories. So that's something like high life, medium life, low life. I can do that down here via add category. I click on it once, enter low, enter high, press return. And then he puts it in here for me. I have now only created the folders for two states. Now I can double click on those names to open the folders for it. You can now see that it's empty. But if I double click on the coordinates, then the folder with the screenshots opens. And there I can see all the screenshots which I have taken in the process to find the perfect coordinates. The last one is of course the one where I have full life and which have the perfect coordinates. Now I just take it and put it in the high folder. Now I go into the game. Now that I have a little less life, I take another screenshot with a little camera. And it has now been automatically created here within my screenshot folder. Then I take it again, cut it out and put it into the low folder. I can open the low folder also by double clicking on its name in the program. That means I now have a screenshot in the low folder which roughly shows the state when I have low life and I have a screenshot in the folder high when I have a lot of life. You can put there multiple screenshots for a better detection rate. You can check this by simply clicking on the folder in the program once and then you see which pictures you have put in there. Now we could do the whole thing for a second area or if you have the full version you can do it for up to 10 different areas simultaneously. And also only the tabs that you put information in will compute. Now we have to save the whole thing by clicking on this down arrow here and then save the whole thing to an in file and we can load it later with the arrow up. Then we select the ini file where it was saved and it will put the information back in for us. If you want to create a new one you can click on this empty one here and it will delete all informations. And then if it's necessary you can load it again. Now let's start the whole thing. Repress the arrow that shows to the right. Now you can see it turns red. That means it's doing something. It didn't find the game window. Now you have to switch to the game and then it says ah Ah, now I recognize game. Let it run just for a moment and go back to the program and now you can see that it has recognized the low state. And if I'm now in the folder where I put the program, I can see that there's now a new folder called trigger. And in it is a file called read with OBS. It simply writes the name of the category into this file, like you named it. And you can then use it later in OBS. Now I just have to read the whole thing with OBS. And you can do that 
with a plugin. The plugin is called Advanced Scene Switcher. If you don't have it, it's a super cool program. It's basically streamer bot just built in into OBS. You can do really cool things here and let me show it. So you first go to the page here. It's also linked in the description of the video. And then you go to download. First, we come to this confusing page. No problem. We just go to the bottom and there are the installers. Download them, run it, install it. If you are now in OBS, of course, you have to create your scenes. I now have my just create a source here that I want to toggle on and off but you can also do it with filters or whatever you want yes there are no limits to your creativity I've just made a simple overlay here I want to toggle depending on how much life I have to do this I click up here on tools advanced automatic scene switcher this is the plugin you just installed and then this confusing looking window opens you can see that it's flashing inactive of course, you have to start it later. Then it will work properly. We just click on macros and we get another little confusing window, but it's not that confusing at all. Just click on the green pulsating plus down here and you can create your first macro. I call that low now because that's the state when I have little life. Now I see, huh? he, he, he didn't do anything. He just wrote low here. Yes, I know. We just have to set up a condition. I click on this middle plus here this window opens and now I can say if they have anything not the scene but I say file because we have created this read with OBS file which I am now looking for by clicking here on open then I go into my program under triggers and here I see my read with OBS file the small number one behind it shows which tab it is for later he will have 10 for it in the full version I say if it says slow then it should do something don't accidentally press this here it's super confusing when you press this little plus here in the middle again because you think it's doing nothing but actually it's putting another condition down here and you can't see it and you're confused later why nothing is working so don't click on this plus click on the little plus further down and now you can set the actions which should appear when the conditions are met you can do everything you want here i can change the scene i can turn sources on and off i can fade in media you name it but now i say visibility of scene element then i select the scene in which i place the source which in my case is a rotator frame now i can tell him to show that he should show the alarm so what he does now is he looks in the game if I have little life, he recognizes that and compares it with a screenshot that he took and recognizes it in the low category. And then in this file, he writes the word low. And in OBS, I say, if in this file it says low, then turn on this alarm. That's all. Now we want to have the opposite of that. The easiest way to do that is to right click on low, create a copy of the current macro. Now I can call it high. And now I basically have the exact same thing, but it's called high. <laughs> but I haven't changed anything yet. Of course, I have to say if the file doesn't say low, but high, because I have a lot of life. If low is detected, it turns on the alarm. And down here, of course, I have to say height now. If low is detected, it turns on the alarm. If high is detected, it turns off the alarm. Then let's test the whole thing. Start your program here. I go into the game, play it for a bit, and then you think, hey, it's not doing anything. Why doesn't it work? Then it's because you forgot to turn the whole thing on in OBS. Of course, you shouldn't forget that we're here under general. You still have this flashing inactive. Of course, we have to start the whole thing. You can see straight away the background has already been active here. It's already blinking happily, yay! Because I don't have much life here. If you start a new round straight away, you see I now have full life again. It automatically changes it so that I have full life again. Now if I'm a little injured, boom, the alarm goes on again. And it stays on until I die, for example, and have more life again. If I now have full life again, bang, he has turned it off automatically. Let me know in the comments what you came up with. I'm really interested in what fantastic ideas you came up with. And have fun with it.